All right, this last part of this section is gonna be an application and it's gonna be, it's gonna relate back to position and velocity. Uh, so we're gonna be looking at the acceleration of an object. So we know how position and velocity functions are related, which for review, velocity is the derivative of position. So then A of T is the acceleration of the object and is given by A of T equals the derivative of velocity, which is the second derivative of position. So if you have the position function, you can get the velocity function, and then you can also get acceleration, but just by doing the subsequent derivatives. So let's take a look at example eight. So whale's velocity is given by V of T, where V is in feet per second, Find Will's acceleration at t equals 2 seconds, and then again at 10 seconds, if his velocity is uh, 30 t squared over t minus 5. So it's asking for the acceleration. So I need to get the derivative, which means I need to use the quotient rule. So the derivative of the top times the bottom minus the derivative of the bottom times the top all over the denominator squared. So let's go ahead and simplify this out just a little bit. So you can multiply this out uh, start combining like terms and we end up with 30t squared minus 300t all over t minus 5 quantity squared. Okay, so there's my acceleration. So now I just need to plug in the two times that they gave us. So plug in the 2 in for t and it's gonna simplify all the way down to a negative 160 over three. And we have units given to us in the problem, which means we need units in the answer. So acceleration is always a length uh, per uh, the time unit squared, because it's like feet per second per second. So the time unit gets squared on it. So a feet per second squared. So the length is always the same and then whatever the time unit is just square and that's your acceleration. Okay so a of 10 just plug in the 10 in for t uh, simplify it down and this one comes out as 0 feet per second squared. So this is a little interesting uh, whenever your acceleration is 0 this happens um, or physics love to use problems like this um, where the acceleration is equal to zero because if it's equal to zero, that's telling you something about your velocity function. So what on earth is it telling you? Well, it's telling you that velocity is not changing. at that time unit. So anywhere they say, hey, the acceleration is equal to zero means that your velocity is remaining constant at that particular time. Um, so it's like you've hit cruise control for, uh, for either a moment or even an interval, uh, depending on how long this acceleration is remaining zero. So if they say, hey, acceleration is zero from t equals zero to t equals five seconds, that means your velocity is remaining a constant speed, uh, whatever that speed is. Um, so just a little FYI, sometimes uh, physics questions like to sneak this in there and then you're just going, what on earth? And you're trying to figure out what velocity is and like, and then, and then it's like, oh gosh, it's being, it's constant. So when you take physics, just be aware of that. All right, example nine, a particle moves along the x-axis where its position is given by x of t equals secant t. 
what is the acceleration of the particle when the velocity is zero in this time interval? All right, so acceleration going from position. So I need the second derivative of position. So I need that to give me velocity. So the derivative of secant we saw earlier was secant tangent. So now if I do the derivative of velocity, which is the second derivative of position, that'll give me the acceleration function, which is the one I want, or at least the one I want to work with. So the derivative of secant tangent. So I need the product rule again. So the derivative of secant is secant tangent times tangent. Plus, now the, do the derivative of tangent. times the front, you can clean it up just a little bit, so secant tangent squared plus secant to the third. Okay, so there's my acceleration function, but I need uh, a time a time to actually stick in there to get the actual value uh, so they didn't tell it to me so again a lot of students when they read this they say when the velocity is zero they change that into hey time is zero and they stick zero in for the t that's not what it says it says velocity is zero here's your velocity that is zero so you got to solve this equation well secant never equals zero so that's not going to affect it it's really just the tangent so where does tangent equal zero zero and pi but zero is not in the interval so I'm just looking at the pi so now I can stick that into acceleration So secant of pi is negative one. Tangent of zero is zero. And if I squared it, you still get zero. Secant of pi is negative one to the third. So you get negative one. Now this one, there are no units in the problem, so you don't need units in your answer. Okay, so that's gonna do it for section 3.3. Uh, try the homework out. Uh, if you have any questions, just let me know.